of 1984 saw the start of another privately funded excavation. At Ramsgate, off the south coast of England, a team of local divers was attempting to salvage the wreck of an East Indiaman, the Admiral Gardner, which foundered in 1809 on the Goodwin Sands. The Admiral Gardner was sailing for India with a cargo of iron and metal objects, including anchors, door locks, nails and coins, when she ran aground. The project director, Salva and amateur archaeologist Richard Larne and his wife Bridget are veterans of the Goodwin Sands, perhaps the most treacherous sandbanks in the world. Moving with the tides and currents, they suddenly open to reveal a wreck and then, just as suddenly, engulf it again. The Goodwins are a graveyard for ships. Compared with the Gulf of Mexico, the physical conditions here are harsh. It's cold, the visibility is poor, and the wreck lies in much deeper water. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. There is practically no public funding for underwater archaeology in Britain. Like Mel Fisher's excavation in Florida, the salvage and eventual sale of the ship's cargo is vital in order that the project can continue. These coins were specially minted for the East India Company and would have been legal tender in the Madras area had they reached their destination. Lahn uses a similar device to Fisher's suction pole. He calls it a hoover. The coins are sucked up and spewed out into a metal basket on the deck above. They are in denominations called 10 and 20 cash and stamped with their mint date of 1808. hundreds of thousands of coins still stored in their barrels under the sea. In 1984, the wreck of the Admiral Gardner was unprotected. The Ministry of Transport considered it to be outside the three-mile territorial limit, and so the divers could salvage as much as possible, as fast as possible. three-week excavation was considered a success. But of course, until the booty is sold, it's impossible to discover if they've made a profit. It's hardly the kind of treasure that would have impressed Fisher.